This is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 26th of February, 2021. On the news today, we start off with some vape advocacy. If you haven't followed the CASA call to action about the USPS vape mail ban, get off your ass and go do it. So just do it! If you have, then go share it on social media so other people go and do it. So just do it. Thank you. Now let's get on to the news. How about Mormon plaster saint Mitt Romney? You know, the guy who back in the 90s increased Russian tobacco sales 300% and taught British American tobacco how to avoid taxes, launder money, bribe customs officials. Is at it again. He's pushing for flavored vaping products to be pulled from shelves all across America. Again, yo, you already played this song and dance. Well, this time he's jumping across the aisle and banging on the little Timmy and Tina bandwagon. <laughs> he's claiming that one fourth of high school kids vape on a regular basis. How about new? Oh, and he threw marijuana under the bus just for good measure, blaming it on marijuana because, you know, word's already out about his cozy little relationship with Big Tobacco. Whoops. Yeah. Some politicians have rocks in the brain. And I think it's time that we start to call the herd by voting them all out of office. <laughs> Give some other schmuck a chance to invade our prior privacy. Strip us of our rights. Constantly lie to us while they make their campaign donors richer. Whoops. Why do I have this attitude today? Because once a policy has been tried by these politicians and proven to be a total failure, you would think that, you know, other politicians would cease to propose the exact same solution in a different state. Nope. 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 Vermont lawmakers are trying to ban flavors just like New York did. And Governor Scott said he's concerned about the impact of flavored tobacco products. Hmm. Looks like March, April, and May are going to be good months for the pharmaceutical industry when adult vapors banned from getting their flavored nicotine are all going to be Jones and Furfix. NRT product sales. Whew. They're going to be going up, no doubt about it. Oh, Jesus. In Australia, we have another article from the Australian Journal of Pharmacy. And this time the title is NRT Debate Lights Up. Hmm. We covered an article from them last week, and it's becoming clear now that what they're doing is not giving people the news but instead they're trying to shape their minds, you know, the minds of the readers towards a certain perspective. You know what their perspective is? We're the experts as pharmacists and dairies, they're just petrol stations. We couldn't possibly hand out medical advice on how to stop smoking. Listen here, bonehead, if you don't smoke, you should never give advice on how to stop smoking. And I don't care what you're trying to sell. I'm not buying it because I already found what actually worked. <laughs> Moving on to Canada, Achieve Life Sciences is pushing forward on their new pharmaceutical product to offer another therapeutic pill to cure people of smoking. Nope. You know, we can thank Yahoo Finance for disseminating this propaganda. You see, more than 75% of Chantix users, well, they can't complete their three month course of treatment because of all the side effects of taking prescription drugs to stop smoking. So now we have a new company coming up with a new pill. And who do they think should try this? Well, 
probably the 73% of vapors who intend to quit vaping because, you know, their dual use uh, is meant that they doubled their nicotine usage. So we need to come up with a new pill to stop people from doubling their nicotine usage. How about new? Whatever. So how about the U.S. Postal Service isn't the only government entity creating a whole new category for electronic cigarettes and vape products? How about Oakville, Ontario Mayor Rob Burton said to council, to his town council, that they must approve a new category for local retailers, you know, so that the town and Halton Regional Public Health can more effectively coordinate enforcement and track non-compliance with the Smoke-Free Ontario Act. Yeah, businesses must cough up $191 for the categorized license. And then they have to renew it every single year for the exact same amount. Kind of reminds me of when the FDA said to all vape shops, you must register all the products that you sell. And then they went after all the businesses who filed that information and didn't file for a PMTA. But this is Canada, where Health Canada specifically told the residents not to go back to smoking if they couldn't get access to their vapes. You know, don't bet on it as long as politicians are involved. Get fucked. And maybe this is why the Canadian Vaping Association is urging consumers to send feedback on regulatory proposals. There's a link in the description. Because if you give regulators an inch, they're gonna take 500 miles. So if you live in Canada and you're watching this news report, do it. So just do it. Moving on. Shanghai Vape Culture Week is coming in less than 100 days. I'll cover the press release about the 2021 International Shanghai Vape Expo. And in the UK, well, the dog eat dog world, especially in the vaping industry, because we're coming out of our infancy, maturing. Yeah. Well, the dog eat dog motto continues as Vaporize sells their shares to Flavor Warehouse. So if you order from vapestore.co.uk or you shop at one of their stores, well, it's under new management. And if you never heard of these companies, how about a quick look at how vape juice is manufactured on an industrial scale, and then your local little corner shop gets to have their branding labels stuck on the side of them so that you think the only place you can get your favorite flavor is from their store. Nope. Speaking of brands most people don't know about, while looking at the PMTA acceptance letters last week, I came across Cavile Brands, AKA Biddy Vapor, and they issued a press release about their new distribution partners. Yeah, because you know, we got the vape mail band coming, so everybody's got to get their products to the stores using their own shipping methods, right? Or you're out of business. Well, how about Biddy Vapor? is now in partnership with the Smokers Friendly International chain of stores. And they're kind of gotten now into partnership with Avail Vapor, <coughs> Altria, and uh, Helms Distribution, <coughs> the biggest Midwest wholesaler of vape products in the United States, according to them. And it's going to bring Biddy Vapor products to over 46,000 stores. And they have aimed projection sales available. And those figures are between 400 and $450 million for the rest of this year. 
Not bad for a Melbourne, Florida company that I never heard about until the USPS vape mail ban. And you want to hear about the only, the only national shipping carrier that can ship vape products? Reimagine delivery. Because just like the 2002 DMX song, X going to give it to you. X go give it to you. What? You to get it on your own. X go deliver to you. Knock, knock. Open. X is going to be delivering your vape products. And I bet DMX and their recording label never thought that their song would become a theme song for a vape shipping company. And since this awesome news for big online vape stores is already taking up so much of the news and it's already way too long, how about I just summarize the last two bits that I have for you as teens missed the memo about Big Brother's flavor ban. Yep, the nanny state fails again. And lastly, I care a lot. No, I really do care a lot. And it's a great movie that you gotta watch this weekend. So you can see Marla sucking on a vape pen, which the actress thinks makes her look like a dragon. I'm telling you, this creepy movie is totally, 100% exemplifies how the big vape players are taking out the other big vape players. And no, the movie is not about vaping, but a vape pen is the key prop in the whole movie. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as I said earlier, if you haven't followed the Kasak call to action, there's a link in the description below. Go follow it and share it and have other people follow it and do it. Because if our voices are not heard by our elected officials, nothing's ever gonna change and it's only gonna get worse. Why is it gonna get worse? Because we have people like Mitt Romney who's in Big Tobacco's products and he's the antithesis of what it is to be a Mormon. But he is purposely going out there and doing everything he can to disseminate all his propaganda amongst all his other elected colleagues and further his agenda to keep big tobacco big, and if not make them bigger. Take a look at the article below and you'll see he's at it once again. Well, one state's flavored tobacco and vape pen is a cautionary tale for the nation. This is published in Forbes magazine. And just because a policy has already been documented to be a proven failure, doesn't mean that politicians learned any lessons from it. Maryland, Washington, Connecticut, and a handful of other states like Vermont are considering bills to ban flavored tobacco and vaping products. Even though this same prohibition backfired in the states where they implemented it, you see, they're enacting these to save little Timmy and little Tina. But little Timmy and Tina, they can't be bothered with memos from Big Brother. They do what they want to do. And if they want to get their stuff, they're going to get their stuff. And if they can't get their fix from their vape pens, then they're going to go to traditional NRT things. They're going to find nicotine gums or they'll use nicotine patches. But if they want to get a fix, they'll get a fix. And all they got to do is run down to the local Kroger or Giant Eagle or Giant or any other regional or nation nationwide grocery store because they have the boxes of NRT therapy items 
right on the bottom shelf for even the youngest child to easily get a hold of. But what do I know? I'm just a common person who quit smoking using a vape device, which they're trying to get rid of. Get fucked. And how about for these states that they passed these laws? What, what, what was the outcome of it? Did, it? did it stop the youth from abusing nicotine? Oh, no? It didn't change the usage? It just changed what products they went to for it? Wow. Did it stop them from getting drunk? Even though that's a 21-year-old or above product as well? No, it didn't stop them from doing that, did it? Did it stop them from using their mom and dad's credit card to order liquor through the mail? No, I guess it didn't do that either, did it? It did stop the money from the adults who were using tobacco products from going into the state coffers. And it did stop people from using their vape. No, it didn't, did it? It just changed where they got it from. So now we have this online vape mail ban. And is it going to stop people from ordering vape stuff that want to order vape stuff? No, it's just going to stop the American small town businesses from profiting because we'll just have to order it internationally because it didn't cover international. Wow. So are all these laws that they're putting into place actually helping the situation? I don't think so. And I bet you don't think so either. Let's move on. Because here's the actual article about how Vermont lawmakers are poised to ban flavored tobacco products. Yeah. So if you live in Vermont, you need to contact your representatives in government and tell them what you think about it and where they can shove this ban. Getting back to a story that we did last week. And I watched it and I'm like, AGP? That's not AGP, that's AJP. Well, what does AJP stand for? The Australian Journal of Pharmacy. Oh, we have a journal directed towards pharmacists. So I was curious to see what news they have to talk about this week. Well, apparently there's a big debate about NRTs. Wait a minute. We, we already covered that. That was a while ago. About how Parliament debated nicotine. Well, the pharmacist who's reading this journal doesn't know that. They're just reading this as, oh, wow, this just happened this week. Calls for pharmacy-only e-cigarettes and liquid nicotine as Senate debates regulation and criticizes rent seekers who want to open retail shops. Who's the rent seekers? Oh, well, those are your petrol stations. But they're not really petrol stations. I mean, yeah, they sell, they sell gas. But what do we in the United States call them? Convenience stores. Mm-hmm. And do people only get gas when they go to the convenience store? Some people, like I hardly ever go in the convenience store ever since I started vaping. But when I was a tobacco user and smoked cigarettes, I was in there all the time, three, four times a week, sometimes even more. Well, according to the pharmacies, I was wrong. They do want involved in this because all they see is dollar signs. There's money to be made here. Oh, we'll make room on the shelf. That's what they're basically looking at. And convenience stores, no, no, no. They shouldn't have access to you know nicotine replacement therapy products. Well, I don't know what it's like in Australia, 
but I know that they have those products available in this country. And there are some cities that require it by law that any place you sell a cigarette, you also have to sell an NRT for them to be able to decide, well, maybe I'm not going to smoke a death stick anymore. Maybe I'm just going to use these nicotine replacement therapy products, which technically is what vaping is. That's why they call them ENDS devices, electronic nicotine delivery systems. So they're going to make this illegal, but you can go in the grocery store and buy a spray of nicotine has the exact same ingredients this does, including flavorings, because you can buy cherry flavored nicotine spray, but it comes from a pharmaceutical company, not, you know, little mom and pop shop or a vape company. Somebody that's branded themselves as a vape company. Well, pharmaceutical companies need to make their money too. That's why there's a whole new pill coming out onto the market. Yeah, Achieve Life Sciences has announced their presentation of data on smoker and electronic cigarette user attitudes and perceptions on quitting at the Society for Research on Nicotine and Tobacco annual meeting. Yeah, a clinical stage pharmaceutical company committed to the global development and commercialization of cysticlean for smoking cessation and nicotine addiction announced three posters featuring data on smoker and electronic cigarette user behavior Wednesday because they had this meeting virtually and they're basically saying what this world needs is another pharmaceutical pill to stop smoking because the ones that we have, we know don't work. And since it's not our company that made them, we can point fingers and say, your shit doesn't actually work. But we have something that works. But see, vape manufacturers aren't allowed to say that their product works. Get fucked. What? Well, that's not fair. Oh, it's not about being fair. It's about being the biggest bully with the biggest profits and the biggest balls, regardless of whether you're male or female, it's about making money. And when you're at the top, the only way to stay at the top is to make sure that you cut everybody's legs off on the way up. Yep. Yeah. Let's take a look at Canada. Oakville Council passes a brand new category of license for vaping retailers. Yeah, so if you're a vape company in Oakville, you have to go get a, a different business license than the general business license. You have to get one that's specifically for tobacco and electronic cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And they're doing this so that they can track non-compliance with Smoke-Free Ontario Act. Okay. In other words, you find an opportunity to make more money. So you got to come up with a new $191 license. The vape shop owners have to go get. Aww. And then they have to renew it every year. Well, that's a bit of a problem. For $191. Ah! Okay. And they said that they're joining other cities like Toronto, Hamilton, and London, which already have bylaws requiring licenses for businesses selling vape products. Yeah. So how about in China, in less than 100 days, will be the 2021 IECIE -E, Shanghai Vape Culture Week. And it's coming to the Shanghai New International Expo Center from the 18th to the 20th of May. And they wanted to get the word out, so they published a press release, which is where I can find a lot of the news. 
if I can get past all the press releases that are there. But it's coming. Pre-registration system is open. Wonder if they forgot that there's still COVID going on. Whoops. Regardless, I'm telling you guys all about this because I certainly am not going to be able to make it to China to go to the Shanghai Vape Culture Week coming in 100 days. But maybe you are interested in it, so I'm letting you know that it's out there. And I can't wait for all this COVID shit to be over because that is something I've always wanted to go to, but never really had the opportunity. Moving on, it's dog eat dog world. And we have some changes going on in the UK. Vaporize has sold their shares to Flavor Warehouse. And maybe it's just because I don't live in the UK, but I never heard of either one of these. But I have heard of vapestore.co.uk. Just never knew who owned that company. And quite honestly, most of us don't look into who owns the companies that where we buy our products from. Get fucked. Just never occurred to me. Whoops. Well, as with any industry, when a big player sees something that the litter player has that they want, that's what they call an acquisition. And they'll go and get it, one way or another. And if they're not willing to sell their shares outright, then you have things like corporate takeovers, where little by little they decimate their opponent and then absorb whatever assets they want to acquire from them. Or they'll buy out a company specifically for one thing and then trash the rest of it. Or they may just be using it to grow faster, bigger, better. Don't know what the goal was, but Dog Eat Dog World is right, right in the mix. Yep. So I mentioned earlier, because I didn't know who Flavor Warehouse was. I certainly don't know who Vampire Vape is. Well, let's take a look at this little video that they have showing you the facilities where they make their vape juice. And this isn't unique for just this company. There's other videos on YouTube from other vape reviewers even, where they went and visited facilities where they make e-liquid. And look at the automation facilities that are there. This is not mom and pop operation. This is an industrial scale manufacturing facility. Look at the vegetable glycerin, the size of that container. It's huge. And this is the facility where they warehouse all the products and the raw materials that they have for manufacture. And that's how they get their flavorings in five gallon buckets. And then they design the labels that go onto those bottles. And oh, look at that. Vampire vape labels. So we got a vampire vape who had this warehouse manufacture all their juice. And a lot of vape manufacturers aren't actually manufacturing juice. They have a laboratory, an ISO certified clean room facility that actually makes your juice. Does it have to be made in a clean room? Well, on an industrial scale it does. But there's just as many vapors DIYing e-liquid at home as I've recently come to find out as there are businesses going and selling what they have as their juice, but they never actually made it. Or maybe they made it originally, but then realized it was actually cheaper and more cost effective to have a big manufacturer make their juice, put their labels on it using their recipe 
and then sell it and distribute it. Shut up and take my money. Well, here's a brand that I didn't hear about until I was doing some research last week on trying to figure out who all that I recognize has gotten an acceptance letter from the FDA regarding their PMTA submission. And I keep hoping to find some big name brand that, you know, I've seen and maybe I'm just not looking in the right place, but uh, I didn't really find anything specific other than when, you know, companies give press releases that they're, they got their letter of acceptance or I've seen people on Reddit posting things that, you know, well, this company got theirs or I heard from this company they got theirs. But there isn't literally like one place you can go to for this type of information, contrary to what you may think. Well, here's a brand that I didn't hear anything about, didn't know anything about until I saw they released a press release saying that they got an acceptance letter from the FDA for their submission, their PMTA submission, and all the products that they submitted are now in the process of being verified. Nice. Well, we all know the USPS vape mail ban and the UPS shipping ban and the FedEx ban is impacting businesses. And I've gotten three emails from companies this week that they are going to be done. Effective April. They're gone. But not everybody's gone. The big dogs are going to find a way to make this work. And if they can absorb other little companies, then that's what they're going to do. But business world doesn't work that way. They don't like to partner up or do things. Little mom and pop stores. Yeah, I could see that forming a little cooperative. But generally speaking, if you're a big business. Nah. It's dog eat dog world. You can't survive. You're not meant to be in the business. You're not tough enough to be a big player. That's the philosophy of some of these companies. Well, take a look at the actual link in the description below. But we do have a company that is saying that they can ship vape products all across the country. The only problem is you have to ship 500 products a day to even be considered as a customer of them. So God kind of got me wondering, you know, how many products does Element Vape ship a day? Eight Vape, some of these other bigger giant online retail places where we've been getting our stuff from. How many of them ship enough products every single day to use a company like this? And how many companies, when this is all said and done, or six months down the road, are going to be able to have enough business, if they're the only ones left, to be able to utilize a company like this? Lots of questions. As is typical, just like when I was going to college, when you start asking questions, 90% of the time you end up with more questions than you started with. So just because you answer your questions, it ends up bringing up a bunch of new questions. And it's like a rabbit hole. You can get stuck down it and lose track of the world around you. But I thought you guys would like to know, there is a carrier and I was very interested to find the pricing because it is comparable to what UPS charges. It's like $10 a package or less. And these are the zoneless rates or you can have zones from their hubs.
If you're only doing 500 to 1,000 a day, this is what their prices are gonna be from different zones. Zone one would be your locality where the products are being sent from. And there was a map here of the different zones they have throughout the country. But basically, if you're in Los Angeles, you could ship to the East Coast if it was one pound weight for 790. Kind of makes you wonder. This business was launched back in September. Kind of makes you wonder. What was the culmination of this? What was their motivation to do this? Because that was before this whole PMTA, not PMTA, but the uh, U.S. vape mail ban went in passed through legislation. Wonder what their target consumer was. Because up until now, I'm sure it wasn't vape. Maybe they're just a logistics company and they have business relationships with hundreds of carriers. I don't know, but there's a viable option. Let's move on. The nanny state fails again. Invasion of the vape snatchers. Wonder if that's coming out as a movie. Anyway. Big Brother says flavor ban protects teens. But the teens eh, must have missed the memo. A nationwide ban on some flavored vapes went into effect earlier this month. But so far, it only seems to be affecting adults, both consumers and producers. The idea is simple, if fundamentally flawed. Nicotine products that taste more like fruit or dessert than tobacco appeal to underage users. So a ban on flavored electronic cigarettes will stop teens from vaping. Simple? Yes. Correct? Of course not. No one who pays attention really believes Big Brother's ban will protect teens from their own destructive tendencies, except for Big Brother. Teen users, it seems, missed the memo entirely. Once again, the nanny state fails to save anyone. I'm going to skip over the little history lesson here. But I will point out the fact that, as it turns out, most adults who vape use non-tobacco flavored products. Because just like me, when I quit smoking... I didn't want to have anything to do with tobacco or tobacco flavors. It actually turned my stomach. And some people are the opposite. Some people need a tobacco flavor to stay off of deadly combustible tobacco. So they should have their choice as well as people like me having my choice. Because realistically, kids are going to do what kids are going to do. And the article also brings us back to another memory. Remember clove cigarettes? Remember when that was a big rage and a big fad that was going on? Yeah, both in college and high school. Many students who smoked believed that they were more natural and therefore less dangerous than regular cigarettes. Some even believed that there was no tobacco in them. Well, so much for that being true, because 20 to 40% of the blend inside the clove cigarettes were actually tobacco. The rest of it was just ground up clove buds and clove oil sprayed on tobacco. And sometimes they put cumin or nutmeg or cinnamon or some other spices in there for flavor. Clove cigarettes are different, of course. They're actually more dangerous because they contain more nicotine, more carbon monoxide, and more tar than regular cigarettes. And they say back in the 90s, it was biddies, often called cig cigarettes with training wheels, because they're small hand-rolled cigarettes from Asia and came in flavors like chocolate, mango, vanilla, lemon, lime, mint, pineapple, and cherry. And they took off with the kids because 
they had the cool factor of looking like marijuana joints. Yeah, and then there's always the standby of whatever mom and dad smokes. Having access to that. Miners have been sneaking from their parents for years. And it's not limited to tobacco or clove cigarettes or marijuana. We talked about this before, too, in the news, too. About kids and the statistics showing how much of them abuse alcohol. Well, how come the pave moms don't have a problem with peach flavored vodka or banana rum or one of the other thousands upon thousands of flavored alcohol products out on the market today? Those are all 21 and over products. There's no ban on alcohol from being shipped and ordered online. So why do you have a problem with vapes being shipped or ordered online? Kind of makes you wonder. And so where they have had these previous flavor ban laws passed, did it work? Did it actually help the kids stay away from liquid nicotine and liquid nicotine products and vapes? Oh, here we have the co-founder of Parents Against Vaping giving an interview and saying kids are sucking on flavored nicotine pouches to get through the day when they can get home to their device. So you just admitted that the kids are going to do what the kids are going to do. And if you ban these products, they'll find another product because they're curious and they're going to experiment. All you do when you ban electronic nicotine delivery systems from having flavors is hurt the adults who are trying to give up combustible tobacco. History and a bit of common sense could have predicted the outcome of this ban like it has of all the other bands of products out there. Miners who want to consume nicotine are still finding a way, and they're going to continue to find a way. Why would anyone expect anything different? If they can't have this, they're going to go find marijuana. Or if they can't find the marijuana, they're going to go find other drugs. Because that's what kids do. They experiment. If you give them the opportunity to get access to this stuff, they'll get access to it and they'll try it. And some of them are gonna get hooked. There's nothing you can do to change that. You can't put these kids into a little tiny bubble and expect them to grow into responsible adults. Why would, why would anyone expect anything different? Meanwhile, us adults and all the other people that are of legal age, either consuming or manufacturing these products, must suffer from your prohibitionist agenda. Get fucked. Why should we have additional restrictions on our liberty? And why should all these mom and pop shops have to close and leave you only with big tobacco? Makes you wonder, are you taking any money from Big Tobacco? Is Philip Morris International funding your campaign? Whoops. Hmm. I wonder. Meanwhile, the rest of us are suffering. Vape shops nationwide have to cope with the loss of revenue and countless mom and pop shops are now closed because of your prohibitionist agenda. I'm sorry, but I care. I care a lot. Speaking of which, there's a movie that came out on the Netflix. It was released this year. And when I was doing the research for this week's news report, I kept coming across it because they're releasing countless press releases 
and people are doing interviews with the people that were in the movie. Why is this movie coming up? Because one of the props in the movie was a vape pen. Actually, it wasn't really a pen. It was more like, you know, something like this. You'll have to watch the movie to actually see it. However, the actress that plays in this movie, which this movie, I'm telling you, it is actually a really good movie. Marla is the character in this movie, and she is a court-appointed guardian looking to help those in need. You know, the elderly, they get uh, dementia and can no longer take care of themselves. Well, if they don't have any family, the court appoints somebody to be their guardian and look over them and make sure that they're well taken care of. So, makes it very easy for somebody that is a court-appointed guardian to get friendly with a local town doctor who can, oh, I don't know, find clients for you. Somebody that's got lots of money built up but has no family that the doctor could very easily go to the court and say, oh, this person can no longer take care of themselves. Their mental status is one that they can no longer be responsible. So then the court decides to appoint this person as their guardian to look after all their stuff. So they go to the person's house and they tell them, oh, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm now your court appointed guardian and you're going to go live in this care facility. And obviously she needs to be paid, so... She goes and sells this person's assets, all of the contents of their house, the house itself, all get sold, to pay for her. Really creepy, isn't it? Well, the whole point of this, and the reason why I'm telling you about this movie, is because one of the main props in the movie is this vape pen. And I came across this interview of the actress talking about why and what's the significance of this vape pen. So I'll give you a little brief. She appears trustworthy, an upstanding citizen, you know, who has the interests of the people at heart. She's responsible, reliable. She's a caretaker, a caregiver. Oh, and then you realize she's yeah. those things. She's just, you know, using these people for everything she can get out of them. Um, and but But she's convincing at role playing. And I think I enjoy kind of taking all those parts of being a woman and sort of using and abusing them. It's, 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 it's an interesting and unsettling place to play in as an, as an actor. I would hate to uh, employ any of those things in life, but I think people do, you know, and I think that's what's so unsettling about these characters is people think, God, you know, maybe I know someone like that. And of course you do, you all do. Yeah, I haven't uh, been able to stop. Everybody knows somebody like that. Using the system like this, and I might have gone down the Google rabbit hole of uh, looking things like that up. Before I have to uh, let you go, I have one other question about something that might seem like a little detail, but I got very obsessed with tracking Marla's use of her vape pen, or rather when she decides to use it and when she doesn't. So what is it like incorporating such a, an active prop into the character like that? Well, it's really fun um, and the vape was really obnoxious and it kind of, you know, sometimes sort of made very kind of aggressive kind of growling noises and, and sometimes, you know, it would, it would come out of my <laughs> nose or my mouth. I mean, it would give me a sort of dragon quality, which I, I fully embraced. <laughs> yeah, there is something else and you can actually go to the link in the description below to actually watch this full video. However, I do like to point out the fact that the backstory of Marla is that she had a vape business until she was Walmarted out of business by a great big discount vape store opening across the street, which she was furious about. Anybody would be furious if they had a mom and pop shop and somebody drove them out of business for no good reason other than just to be rich or to get richer. 
Well, as the article continues, I think that was her shot at the American dream played fair. She had a small time business. She was a small time business owner. She got screwed. And then she thought, right, chips are down. I'm going all in. I'm going to play the system like everyone else does. And I think every time she inhales, it's bringing that attitude into it. It's the attitude of having been screwed, and now you're out to screw everybody else in the process. Yeah? Is that what the world is coming to? Well, we can say for a certainty, there are people in this world that are like that, and they don't have a problem taking center stage to show you their true colors. Whoops. Anyway, I highly recommend going to watch this movie. I care a lot. It's on Netflix. It's a two-hour movie. And it's kind of creepy. Hmm. But justice does prevail in the end. And the one thing I did forget to talk to you about, and there's a link in the description below. If you live in Canada, you have to put your voice out there as well. It isn't just us in the United States that have to go to CASA and follow through with their call of action. The Canadian Vaping Association says, if you live in Canada, you need to go to their website and have your say. And they also provide it both in French and English. So go and fill out the information and become an advocate, fight for your rights. Because if you don't, they're gonna be taken away from you. So that pretty much wraps up this Five on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 26th of February, 2021. And my message to you, as always, and it's going to stay the same. Keep on vaping. As long as it keeps you away from burning deadly combustible cigarettes. All right. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And I'll catch you next week.